Welcome, everybody, to episode 168 of The China Show. 168, what up? What's going? Yeah, we've got uh, quite the show for you. Sorry, what I'm organizing earth are you talking about? I'm organizing stuff. All right, cool. Well, uh, let's get right into it. We're going to saunter right into what's going on here, guys, with what's new, when we talk about what's new, specifically with regards to China. Now, um, there's this thing. China has this homegrown passenger airliner. That's right. Gets, you grow up airplane? Yeah, well, I mean, home, mm. yeah, it's home stolen, I should no, say. No, they call it homegrown, though, yeah. like in all Chinese media. Here's the thing about this, okay? It is like the darling of China, obviously. This I is like darling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like, hey, this is our first homegrown, home-built yes. passenger airliner. So it's, it's a massive propaganda tool. Yeah. The problem with it is, is that the majority of it is actually just foreign parts. Oh, what do you think? What do you expect? So the avionics and the electronics and the engines and everything come from er everywhere else. Are you trying to tell me mainland China would steal IP? Come on. Well, it's not about stealing. I think they even licensed some of it. Oh. But I mean, it's about as impressive as somebody buying a Lego car and putting it together and saying, I made this. I made this from scratch. Yeah, but, <laughs> but following the Lego instruction book, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty yeah. much what it is, yeah. right? But uh, here's the thing. Um, it's very important to China. Okay, it's a very sensitive thing because, again, they're trying to prove that China can do everything just like the rest of the world, right? Yeah, if you see, like, multiple outlets pumping this out over and over and over again, especially if you see, like, white monkey shield type people talking about it, then that means there's an initiative from the Chinese state yeah. to make sure that people really care about this. You yes. know, by the way, do you know what I care about? Is that everyone hits the like button, by the way. Oh, right that'd be in nice. the beginning of the stream because then they'll get more eyes on this and oh, we'd, we'd really appreciate, appreciate it. it. We'd appreciate it. So yeah, yeah anyway. you can gently tap the, the like button if yeah. you like. Anyway. It should be called C444. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so here's the thing. Something mysterious has been going on with this thing because it debuted finally, you know, it finally entered public service. Yeah. So what? what's the, was it MU9197 was the? Yeah, it was, I, think, uh, I got notes here. It's a MU nine one nine seven. Yeah, okay, good call, cool. Good call. So that's the flight number. Well, why you know that flight number? I could not tell you. Yeah, it's interesting. But <laughs> hey, here's the thing: we all know that flights have flight numbers. So hey, if you're going to go from Chicago to LA yeah. or whatever, it's going to have on on Delta. It'll be like DL six oh seven. Right. And it's always that. Sure. Every day, it's the same. It's the same flight, and yeah. they use the same aircraft and whatever. That's right. Now this flight went to Chengdu. But when this it is in Sichuan. Yeah, and when it came back, it wasn't the C919 anymore. Oh, what it happened? was an Airbus A320 or something. That's incredible. I knew China loved Transformers. <laughs> yeah, so it changed. Yeah. It just yeah. magically, without any explanation. Is it a plane? Well, I mean, here's the thing. No explanation, oh, of, okay. course. of course. So it got all the like aviation enthusiasts, you know? Weird yeah. bunch, weird bunch. Follow all those little flight maps. I don't know. They sit there with notepads, taking notes. They got like chalkboards with, you know, string and all that. You know? Yeah, anyway, like, like solving them. Yeah, yeah, solving the puzzles. Yeah. Anyway, a lot of flight enthusiasts were like, what's going on here? Right. It left the same flight number. And even look at the flight number. 9197. So it's 919. So the C919. So it's ah. even, even the flight number is the model of the plane. Wow. Okay. It flew all the way there but suddenly got swapped out with an Airbus and flew back. Huh. Now, aviation experts and even people that used to be in the Chinese aviation industry and stuff are saying that never happens unless there's a problem with the plane and it's not fit for flying. Yes. So some, some issue has been detected. Right. And so, of course, they're very hushed up about this. It's incredibly sensitive. You're not allowed to talk about it. Huh. So I think we can safely say that it's not passing all the safety um, requirements. Yes. Because imagine what a disaster would be if it crashed. It's funny because the hush up, the crashing is not funny. What's funny is the, uh, you know, plane, I don't want to mm -hmm. call them nerds because I'm into weird stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Like, I the like planes the aren't even weird. Mm -hmm. No, but you know, like people that are really into it, they'll go on like an Airbus and buy like a model of it. That's not weird. I'm saying those kind of people that pay attention to those details, they notice this kind of stuff. Of course. Like you said, they got maps out. They're doing their own homegrown Hey, maps. especially if it's such an important thing yeah. and it's a national pride issue. That's what I'm saying. The Chinese aviation uh, enthusiasts, They're paying attention. this is their most important thing. They're so excited, and they should be. Yeah. And they watch this happen. They're like, wait a minute. And they know when the cover-up happens. They're the ones on, on the forums. They're like, guys, yeah, what's we going know on? what's going yeah. on here, right? Exactly. So didn't, anyway. Didn't pass muster. I would like to say I'm surprised, but I'm not. 
you know, there's a, mm. there are certain things you can copy and you don't need to worry about it. You copy a bicycle, it doesn't matter if you use the same strength as steel, what's going to happen? A spoke's going to snap, maybe you're going to wobbly wheel, maybe you fall down and crash, but yeah. it's okay. But a plane, it's a different story. True. Anyway, so let's move on from that. We'll uh, update you if anything comes of it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it's summer. Guys, <laughs> you know what we like to do in summer? Go we, to the beach. Yes, I just went to the beach in Massachusetts. So yeah, exactly. Great. If you live near a beach, it yes. takes us a while to get there. But go to the beach. And Chinese people are the same if they live near the sea. They love going to the beach. They do. The problem is you end up swimming in garbage. This is a huge issue in China. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's just people get disappointed because... Think about it, this guy is probably from somewhere inland, right? He goes to the beach with his family. And he goes, "How do I lie to you?" Yeah, so much he's garbage. he's com he's complaining. And this is something I'd see all the time yeah. in China. Um, this this is a problem um, in China, and it's because of the whole communist system. Yeah, yeah. Public public property, or uh, I should say, public stuff, is no never taken care of. Yeah. There's no respect because it doesn't belong to you, and you have no incentive in China to look after something that doesn't belong to you no. either. And that's why you'll see like buildings; they look really the run state down. Will take care of it. Yeah. Uh, and it's not your problem. Yeah. Throw something away on there. There's it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. And buildings. <laughs> exactly. It's got nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you'll look it's at a building. It'll be all like run down and crappy. But if you go inside to someone's apartment, they're generally nicely taken care of because yes. that's that's their little space. And it belongs to them, even though temporarily in China, because you can't actually buy property. You lease it. But at least that's – they take some pride in that. But if it's outside in the lawn or the – They'll leave it to rot, and it's the same with this kind of Let it rot, thing. one might say. Mm -hmm. This is an issue um, in China if you go to the beaches. It's horrendous. Is that a 5G beach? Maybe it is 5G. Yeah. Pearl white. <laughs> you know what I mean? It looks like mud. Yeah, it is. Pearl white beaches. Who says that? <laughs> Good old clam man. Clam man. Yeah, anyway, so uh, I would severely suggest that you avoid uh, Chinese beaches during any kind of holiday. Yo, you know what's even worse than the actual beach condition? What? Or the throngs of people is the quality of the water right up there where people are. Do you know how polluted the, the oceans are off the coast of China? It's Especially scary. where we used to, you know, in Shenzhen, because yeah. they've got that Diawan power, yeah. like nuclear power plant nearby, which dumps, as you'll find out later in the show, a large amount of like contaminated mm. water into the bay. Yeah. Um, which kind of sucks, but uh, just to, I made a video. You can go look where I actually needed my passport to get onto the beach in yeah. in Shenzhen. They have machines you have to book now because it got so bad that they actually had to make a system where you have to reserve a spot on the beach. But yeah. it's still crazy. Fred. It's still super crazy. But yeah, anyway. Um, anyway, Taiwan is in Huizhou, and that's actually where I used to swim. Yeah. To get to the closest beach, it only took me half an hour from where exactly. I lived. Exactly. And I go there, and it was shocking to look at a nuclear plant. Yeah, we've got While footage. You're swimming. We've got footage, yeah, remember? Me, so yeah, I'm swimming. And you can in see, the, right there in see front of the, the nuclear power plant That's over the right. way. Yeah. Horrible. Horrible. Anyway, um, yeah, what is this? This is uh, sea milk now. Mm -hmm. CPPC sea milk. This comes from CPPCC. CPPCC. Yeah. There's a China shill yeah. who looks like me, and I think they're trying to replace me with a, a China shill. Yeah, I think um, so. I think it war it's warranting a video. Yeah, I think yeah. you should do something about it, man. They stole your look. I they probably know. got plastic surgery for the guy. <laughs> to make his eyes dark like mine. Yeah, they like just pun <laughs> punch him every morning. <laughs> That's what I do to myself. Yeah, yeah exactly. I hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is kind of funny and hilarious, and it shows you some ingenuity. You know, uh, when you travel on the high-speed rail in China, it's kind of like if you travel by plane these days, you have a little yeah. power outlet on the seats. Yeah. So what does this guy do with a power outlet? <laughs> this is in Chongqing. <laughs> <laughs> He's cooked rice. Why not? Bring your own food. Right? Keep it hot. Ever people are cracking up at this, but yeah. this is very is as much of an outlier as this is, and people are laughing. Yeah. Um, this is something you'll see when uh, parents get their kids ready to go study abroad. They like pack a rice cooker with them with rice, and it's like, bro. Half the time they're going to Australia, mm -hmm. where there's Asian supermarkets everywhere with that exact same brand of rice cooker available yes. to them to buy immediately yes. at the shop or online, and the exact same brand of rice. Yeah. But that doesn't count. No. It's got to be from China, yeah. yeah. There's a thing about that, and uh, 
You know, you know, there's like these border security shows. Yeah. If you ever, there's one for Australia. I can't remember what it's called. It's yeah, like me. Border Forces or whatever. If you watch that, man, it's like half the show is just about um, Chinese students and Chinese aunties and stuff bringing literally a supermarket's worth of food every time they come over the border. Yeah. And they always try to lie about what's in there because you know, right. in Australia they're very strict about you're not allowed to bring fresh vegetables and fruit. But they can buy all and, the same stuff. I know, but they want to bring all the parasites and stuff. They don't understand that that can be de- detrimental, especially to Australia's yeah. like like livestock and whatever yeah. they just bring it over anyway uh so yeah watch that if you want to laugh um, train rice rules dude yeah train rice man like better why not now can you explain what's going on here i'll play a little clip here of it <laughs> i i apologize <laughs> I mean, to everyone's is, ears <laughs> i turned it down <laughs> okay. this is actually what you're seeing the sixth circle of hell yes uh, it's from dante's inferno mm-hmm. real scene mm-hmm. yeah uh, truth truthfully this is a recreation of chairman mao's bad old days and this is the time period that most people in china want to forget mm-hmm. this Except is for a certain demographic well, we'll get into that there there was a time mm-hmm. called the uh, cultural revolution where everything chinese was destroyed yes if you're a hist- history uh, historian or a, a professor or somebody that understood china a scholar or a scholar or someone that a mu- museum curator you were potentially murdered in yeah. the streets. Yeah, teacher, anyone. Mm-hmm. Because Mao said that that was bourgeoisie. Yeah. That was bad, and we need to get rid of the intellectuals and get rid of Chinese culture. Yeah, get he rid of Chinese the old fours. Yeah. yeah. Um, people love to forget that. This is the downfall of China. Yeah. Um, this is what wiped the slate clean. Literally, it destroyed Chinese culture. That's why um, a lot of people, myself included, are very disappointed when going to mainland China, trying to find Chinese culture. Yeah. Because you always think you're going to see, it. yeah, you think you're going to see like temples and kung fu and all this, but it's all whitewashed. It's all garbage. It's all, I, I hate to say it, but it's just very hollow. Yeah. You know, you can find, like you say, yeah. remnants, but you have to look really hard. And you got to talk to locals and stuff. Yeah. And that's, we had fun doing that. Yeah. You'd have to get like some word of mouth that was passed yeah. down secretly because you're not allowed to discuss it. Right. And the temples have all been destroyed. All the scriptures have Genuine been destroyed. Ones, yeah. yeah. It's so bad that when you study traditional Chinese medicine in China, um, the doctors actually have to go to Japan. Because it was preserved. Yeah. Because Japan has copies of the old scrolls and things for the tri- Chinese medicine, which they preserved, which China it's pretty destroyed. Pretty insane. Yeah, I mean, and just go to Taiwan and you'll see real Chinese culture. I, I talked to a TCM scholar. Yeah. Uh, from America, he's translated like Taoist texts and stuff. He's he's Lehi. He's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he, yeah, he was talking about the whole system. If you study any of this stuff in China, it's it's basically fake. Yeah, it has to be. Uh, you have to go and f- hunt for it yourself and find the truth yourself. Find yeah. the Tao. You have yeah, to find yeah, the find way. the Tao. Anyway, yeah. back in the day, in the gory old days, yeah. instead of the glory days, yeah. um, back then they would take intellectuals and they would torture them in the streets, right? Yes. And this is a Struggle sessions is what they were called. Struggle sessions. And a lot of times people were killed in public. Yeah, they beat them to Stone death. and beaten. Because they're all like, oh, look, he's a bourgeoisie. He's a he's professor. A teacher, yeah. And they will write down his crimes on his dunce cap his and dunce put cap. a placket around his neck. And, all and this that. is what they're doing here. This is a modern recreation of this and everyone's cracking up laughing. And this is what's scary is that this is the stuff that most people wanted to forget and is now becoming popular amongst a certain generation of older people to laugh with and, and think it's fun and it's the, it's good, the good it's old times. It's nostalgic for them. Yeah, because these are the people that potentially did these things. Yeah, I mean, remember, a lot of the people that did these atrocities were very young. Yeah. So very young teenagers, you know, people in middle and high school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They were empowered by Mao Zedong and said, you... It was a cool go, thing to do. Go and arrest your teacher. Go beat him up. Go kill your teachers and your parents Red or whatever. Yeah, rat everybody out, you know, and he gave it to the, you know, that rebellious youth period yeah. in most people's lives. That's the wrong time to give them like power over other people's lives. Yeah. And he did that. So that now they've grown up, I guess they're like, hey, I really enjoyed that time. Let's, <laughs> let's have, teacher. yeah, remember that? Let's, <laughs> let's recreate it. <laughs> so dumb. Why did they have like a Uyghur? Like a, I don't know, dude. Why did they gotta have like that? Oh, well, like, is that like a Uyghur ethnic minority costume there? They've got a, they've with, got multiple minorities. With, yeah, I know they do, but it just looks like you know, there it's like you know a what, spear. Without saying, you know what's happening here. You they know they're just, they're just like, hey, it's a minority. They kind of have a, a hat. You know, <laughs> here we go. Here we dude, go, dude. We have this fantastic footage. You know, yeah. look, we we can talk shit because we lived it, and I went to. Let me explain this because it's kind of funny. I used to train doctors, okay? Mm. And I went to this hospital, okay, out in the middle of nowhere. And they put on this, like, play. Because 
you get this in every business in China. Um, and a school doesn't matter what, but like at least once a year, they'll have like a little thing where all the members of staff will dress up and do a dance, like a talent show. You've seen it, right? Yeah. It's always, so they're always doing something and it usually involves singing and dancing. It's in universities, it's everywhere. Yeah. I've been so, part of them. So they decided they were going to do some um, ethnic minority dancing. None of them were ethnic minorities. They're all Han Chinese. So they bought on Taobao, which is like the Amazon of China, right? They bought ethnic minority clothing. They just like typed in Xiao Shu Minzu. Yeah. This stuff was atrocious. Remember? It's just fake. And I watched it and I was being very polite. And I was like, that's very interesting. They're like, yes, this is just a woman, the Xiao Shu Minzu, the Yifu. Yeah, you know, yeah. this, this is our ethnic minorities clothing. And they were like, here, you can have it. And they like one of them that they'd worn was all sweaty. And so they're like, here, you can keep it because it's interesting for you foreigners. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. Remember, I bought it up to the shop and you wore it on camera. You washed it first. No. Why didn't you warn me? I don't know. It just didn't seem like necessary. Anyway, the fact of the matter is we've got footage of it, which we'll show next time. Yeah, it's on a YouTube video. Yeah, it's on a YouTube video. Yeah. And it's leopard print like... It's made Headbands, up. It's just made up. Random it color. It looks like if you tried to fake or describe some African tribe's like outfit to someone, then during Pride Month. During Pride, yeah, during yeah. Pride Month to a Chinese person <laughs> yes. that doesn't know either of those things there, and then drew it. There's nothing authentic about this costume. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's so pathetic, and you look ridiculous <laughs> wearing it. You look yeah. like Zoolander. That was remember? the joke. Yeah. We wanted to see if anyone would say anything, and nobody dared. There, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we wanted to see her, like, nobody's going to call me out. Yeah, it's so <laughs> pathetic because there's no, like, ethnic minority that's got, like, a, a fake, looks like a prostitute's miniskirt that, yes. like headband yeah you know it's insane and it's, it's crazy and that there's lots of rainbows all over yeah, that's why the yeah. pride month thing it's literally yeah. covered in rainbows yeah it's so ridiculous anyway yeah. so um that's probably what's going on here with they they're like let's throw in some ethnic minorities let's do into minorities this. yeah i don't know man anyway let's uh let's finish this ridiculousness off <laughs> You gonna chop his head? What's going on with that's that big they're, machete? They're getting ready to do. Yeah. It's so funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yes. Anyway. Okay. Before we continue with our enthralling show, we have a little word from our sponsor over here. So please pay attention. Why use Why use a VPN? Well, it's pretty simple. It's an anonymous tunnel that keeps your connection private, hidden, and secure. Seriously, no one can see what you're doing. Not even your ISP. And that's why we use Surfshark. One subscription allows you to install and run Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices at the same time. Surfshark runs on all platforms. PC, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, Smart TVs, Amazon Fire TV Stick, Apple TV, Chrome, Firefox, Xbox, PlayStation, anything you can throw it at, it works on. There's a 30 day money back guarantee and it gives you plenty of time to try out Surfshark for free. So why not give it a shot? See if you like it. We certainly do. See if it's useful. We certainly think it's useful. Surfshark doesn't keep any logs and this guarantees that they do not hold on to your data or keep any of your private information. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash ADV podcast and use the code ADV podcast to get 83% off a two year plan plus three extra months for free. Yep, so go check it out. Oh, what what is this that we've got in the Some background? Fantastic fan art. It says, uh, mm -hmm. All My Authoritarian Babies. It's a comic <laughs> from a very special artist that yep. uh, is a friend of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, and Actually, I'll get babies. us out of there. You can see a signature down there. There's two babies. One mm -hmm. of them is wearing a like hammer and sickle type thing. Yeah. It says, uh, Bro, I know I'm just a baby and all, but did that effing water cooler talk? <laughs> and there's a water cooler that says glug 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 diplomacy. Yeah, so if you don't know, here's the sound bite. <laughs> Wang Wen being. Uh, he is the most hollow man. <laughs> <laughs> he just can't, he can't have an opinion. Yeah. Can he? Nope. He's a state mouthpiece for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and yes. he goes out there and just has to say, like, the state's rhetoric. And someone in our show, a fan of the show, made made a joke and said he just sounds like a water cooler. Yeah. Just going, because he, he can't pay attention to him. And yeah. so it just became this running joke that he's a water cool, cooler diplomat. Yeah, I often reply to him on Twitter because I'm yeah. not even joking, but every single day he'll, he'll have one mandate. Like, I really? think it was... Um, 
the other day it was Taiwan again because it's either Taiwan or the or Japan's n- nuclear hot. water or whatever. So Taiwan and he's like Taiwan is an inalienable in an inalienable whatever inseparable part yes. of China. So I'm just like you're an inalienable <laughs> and inseparable part of all whining losers or something <laughs> like that. But he just won't stop. <laughs> Every day he'll post the yeah. same thing like five it's or six literally times. Literally his job. Yeah, but just in slightly different wording to see if he yeah. can like hit the the right mark. He's a very annoying guy. Yes, and mm. in the new Twitter, the way Twitter's running, those people get a lot of say. Yeah, they do. They get a lot of boosts. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh well, let's move on from uh, this. Are we ready to hit the uh, main segment, the uh, soft power hour? I think we are. Yes, yeah, we are. Okay, guys. So it's soft power hour where we talk about how China is trying to change your mind and the mind of people all around the entire world, including within China. Yeah, through all sorts of funny means. And man, do we have kind of a sinister one for you today. Yeah, so if you guys read the title, you'll probably see it says, China wants teen pregnancies and babies to learn Xi Jinping thought. Mm -hmm. Now, those are two separate things, but they kind of tie in. They absolutely tie in. It's part of this huge platform. And I think there's something that I've been fighting with uh, nationalists about, or Wu Mao's about, kind of, um, because they want to have their cake and eat it too. What I mean is they want to have this fervent nationalist platform in China where everyone's unified and can say all these horrible racist things all the time. Yes. And they want to have that and they want to run with it and they want their language barrier to be up so that nobody understands what they're saying domestically. And then to the rest of the world, they want to look like progressive, very, very tolerant, awesome, future forward, AI 5G, high yes. tech, yeah, exactly. amazing people that just want to show you yeah. how beautiful their country is. They, they've got all the answers, lift people out, yes. out of poverty, have great technological inven- you know, inventions and stuff, yes. yeah. which is all not true. What's actually happening right mm-hmm. now in, you know, if you you break down that language barrier, is very akin to what happened in the beginning of Hitler's Germany. Yes. And I don't say that lightly, and I'm not trying to get a rise out of people. That's quite literally what's happening with ethno-nationalism in China right now. Yeah. It's an ethno-state, and it's becoming dangerous. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, everybody these days is kind of bored of people saying, like, oh, you're a literal Nazi or whatever. But this is... (laughs) Look, we we'll look past that. That's yeah. that's cheap stuff. That's yeah. cheap tactics where you just want to get a make rise out of better, someone yeah. or make someone. We're actually being factual here. Like you were saying, it's about the ethno state. Yes, and so. I think this quote. I want to start to start this off with this quote. Um, yeah. When I was putting this together, I think it was most important that you guys see this quote from Xi Jinping in a museum. Can you yeah, get us on it? Yeah, here? sure. What does it say? It says, "Here's a quote from Xi Jinping in a museum. I believe this is in Sichuan. Mm-hmm. It says." The newest research in archaeology shows that China is the origin of human civilizations in the East, and Africa is just another place for the origin of humans. Mm -hmm. And what that means is China has evolved separately racially to the rest of the world and is the motherland of all Asian people. Yeah, so all Asian, what he's saying there's all Asian civilizations come from China. From China. And the rest, the rest of evolution happened from Africa, but that's not related to China. No, it's like we're separate. And that's, I, I don't know why we are at a point now where we're kind of entertaining China on a diplomatic level when this is the national rhetoric from the top, right? They've been trying to do this for years, by the way. Yeah. I mean, we covered Tip-toeing. this We covered this a while ago, this Peking Man thing. Mm. And Peking Man is supposedly, you know, they found this uh, the skeletal remains of uh, completely separate to like... Uh, Whatever we're we're based on Neanderthals and yes. Homo. Whatever. We're not in China. We're not all allowed to come from the same thing. Yeah, yeah there's exactly. no way a superior so, on people. Can yeah, come so from. <laughs> so there's been a, a theory which has been actually presented as fact many times in the yes. past few yes. decades um, that Chinese people evolved from a separate ancestor to the rest of the world. Yeah, and it's called Peking Man. Yeah. So they're like, we found this, and it proves that Chinese people have got nothing to do with Africans, right. nothing to do with Europeans. We're not related. Separate. We're like, you know, di- conversion master race or whatever. Bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's all that kind or of thing. Yeah. 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 One, yeah. Anyway, scientifically, it's been proven false. Or, or inconclusive, at least. Yeah. Well, the fact is they did tests and found out that the the same origins of whatever DNA and stuff that you find in everyone else is also found in Chinese people. So yeah, they, they're the they same. All come, we all come from the same Yeah, place. we're all humans. Spo- spoiler alert. Exactly. Yeah, we've got different <laughs> breeds of humans. You know, yeah. we're a little different here, you know. Right. That's, that's just how it is. Some of us have, you know, silky coats and others, you know, yes. don't. But, you yeah. know, that's the thing. I don't know. Well, you know, like my, if you, my coat's not silky. That's you know what I mean? Sure. I'll scratch your back, you per mine type thing. You yeah, know, yeah, you know how that sure, goes. For sure. Depends on where you come from. Absolutely. But hey, here's the thing. Look at this. 
This is China trying to claim that the the origin of the Chinese race is separate from everyone else. At an official and level. This bullshit keeps cropping up and it keeps being proven wrong, but then they keep finding ways to kind of go back to it and reignite this this theory. Yes. And you can see that through that Xi Jinping quote. Even if Xi Jinping's saying that, maybe not in as many words. I, but do, he's, I do think this quote's very important. Yeah, because it's the great dear leader, whatever, supreme you, leader. And you would never see this quote posted in English on a Harvard website. No. Or something like, let's just say, I don't know why I said Harvard, but let's just think about it like an American institution. You know why I said Harvard? Because they keep like doing studies on behalf of China <laughs> yeah, and, and China's always like, you know, quoting them, hey. look, this Harvard study hey. proved. Cause, I'll tell you, you know. what, the American education system at the top levels, at the university level, man, they, you guys got to you guys gotta re, like, reorganize a little bit here because sure. uh, I think your funding from China is getting a little heavy-handed. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think it's important to understand that quote because you would never see that in English and promoted by China in the English language. That is for Chinese people to see. Yes, right? yes. And they're relying on that kind of language uh, barrier. Language barrier. <laughs> To hide their intent, yeah. right? And when I say they, I'm talking about the Chinese government's intent at being superior and separate to the rest of the world, very similar to what we saw North Korea do as they closed off over time. Yeah. Um, and we're getting to that point. When you see economic downturn with an authoritarian state and very, very low freedom of press, you watch states close down so that they can deal with their domestic issues. And that's what we're dealing yeah, with. Yeah, absolutely. Too. At the same time, they want to have their cake and eat it too and control other countries' uh, narratives around China and make sure that people are giving them what they need. Right. Correct. Now, this wow. is a great example uh, that you you pulled up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Why don't you explain this? Okay, so um, you know Xi Jinping thought. I do. I'll talk about it in a little bit. Okay. Well, basically, there's this uh, program now on this app where they're trying to teach Xi Jinping thought to fetuses in the womb. Okay. Yes. And I think rather than trying to explain it, let's watch and we can read through the subtitles along with yeah, everyone Yeah, I have a whole there. breakdown of Xi Jinping thought after this. Yes. So, yeah. so this was released by the Great Translation Movement. And for those of you who don't know the Great Translation Movement, they're fantastic. You can find them on Twitter. Mm. And um, they are doing a great job at getting rid of some of the uh, mystique yes. behind the Chinese internet. Because just like that quote from Xi Jinping, you would never have known about it unless somebody actually translated yeah. and told you about Correct. it. Correct. And it's the same with everything else. News that's released in, in China in the newspaper, they literally say, oh, America is our enemy. Okay? Yep. But when they're facing the rest of the world, we have to, we have to join work hands to... America, you why know, are you bullying? Yeah, it's like, oh, we have to meanwhile, like yeah. to the local population, they're like, screw the outside world. Yeah, we so, hope it dies. Yeah, exactly. So let's take a look at this absolute absurdity over here. We'll get us out of here. Okay, so... <clears throat> Xi Jinping Thought Learning App is an excellent platform uh, which has a wealth of learning content. And it has accompanied me through a taught early pregnancy. Oh. Yeah, well, taught is what it says there. Yeah, I'm just reading the Chinese. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, in pregnancy, once heard the party's theoretical knowledge, my baby's fetal movement was too much. Okay, that's like... <laughs> so Xi Jinping thought, before we get into some yeah. examples, is basically the ideas of the dictator. And yes. now you're supposed to have an app, mm -hmm. especially if you work for the government, you have to have it. And you have to be following his doctrine. Xi Jinping yes. thinks this, he thinks that, this is why the party is good. And she played this to her fetus. Yeah, and then she says it responds by moving around. No shit, it's probably like, turn that crap off. I can't, like, ah, I'm trying to develop me. here. You know, I'm trying to develop. I can't block my ears. My arms aren't long enough. What are you doing to me in here? You know what I mean? It's so unfair. This poor kid's learning Xi Jinping thought in the freaking womb. This is a it's sick pathetic. country it's now. Pathetic. It's I'm pathetic. so sorry. I feel bad for Chinese yeah. people. They have to download this app. Yes. And, I mean, to put it into perspective for people... This is some shit that Xi Jinping came up with like probably 10 years ago. He's like, I'm yeah. just going to make a book about my thoughts and force everyone in the country to agree with them and listen to them, study them yeah. and take tests. Yes. And it's not, dude, this Xi Jinping thought, because I know doctors, right? Doctors, they are uh, state employees in China. Yes. They have to every yeah. day. This it's, app, any, it's any, uh, what is it called? State employee, uh, like government Not just employee. state employee. It's called a, it's a, even a bigger umbrella. A mm -hmm. civil worker. Yes, yeah, civil servant. Civil servant. So anyone that's even adjacent to it. Yeah. 
you have to open up this damn Xi Jinping Thought app, yeah. and you have to answer quizzes every yes. day and make sure you pass a certain pass rate. Yes. Otherwise, you get penalized. Yeah. What kind of garbage is this? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a man. What have they done? Like, they're poisoning society, right? Yeah. And, and the thing is, a lot of people want nothing to do with this. Yeah. But the civil service, they make over make up over 100 million people in yeah. China. It's a freaking man. It's, it's not like man. It's not like a deity or some religious thing that has had thousands of years to develop. Yeah. So, I mean, one could, one could argue that the Bible is also just a man wrote that junk or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, it's got thousands of years of, you know, lore and history and people coming together and agreeing on one thing. It's not or, one... Or multiple interpretations. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like tons of different people. So it's not one man. Yeah. It's like, okay, let's just say I hate ice cream. And now I'm that one man who hates ice cream. Now I get to write down this thing and everyone has to read it and they have to say, uh, liking ice cream is a is a crime, is a yes. sin. And that's because I decided. If right. it was more, multiple people, they'd say, shut the hell up, man. What's wrong with you? I'll be honest with you. If you, if you brought this up in 2010... Yeah. Right, in China and said, you're going to have a dictator after Hu Jintao yeah. and he's going to make you download an app and study his thoughts. They would all say, no, Mao is dead. Yeah. Wait, Mao, Mao, that part's over. This is the new China. Like yeah. we're, we're modernizing. They would, they would scoff. Yeah. But again, this is what happens when the framework's already been written. The framework exactly. was written for a dictatorship. It didn't change. It's absolute pathetic stuff, yeah. dude. It's, it's like it's Kim Jong-un haircuts. Yeah, it's, it is. It's like a power-hungry, disgusting cult of personality thing. And to now be forcing fetuses to learn this is pathetic. Yes. Anyway, let's continue. Yeah. <clears throat> then, friends <laughs> joke that <laughs> the baby's theoretical knowledge will be very solid. <laughs> In Xi Jinping Thought Learning App, there are English Enlightenment songs, <laughs> lullabies, and so on. Oh my gosh! Dude, all right, so here's the we got to get our hands on this app. I yeah. have to do it. I'll probably end up I'm doing a video I'm just curious, like, what is a lullaby? I want to know a Xi Jinping lullaby. Hush, little baby, don't you cry, because if you do, you'll surely die. Yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't say a word against the party or you'll end up, I don't know. Being tardy to <laughs> being a puddle of tank run over thing. Oh I don't even my know. God, it's bad. Like a, a lullaby from Xi Jinping Thought app is like my nightmare. I would hate that. Can you just imagine that? It's like imagine there was like Biden lullabies or something, but everybody had to learn <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, you know, Biden lullaby. What the hell? Or like Alex Jones lullaby. Alex Jones. Like, like what the hell, dude? Like Infowars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Imagine that was a thing, but it's like, like techno remixes. Yeah, exactly. Of Alex Jones. But it's reached a stage that everybody has to listen to this crap oh, and take it seriously. You know what I mean? This is out of control. It's out of control. Anyway, let's see what else. <laughs> so it's also my fetal education and early education can tool. I, can I just say this is so important that you understand that this is that everyone's banking on this language barrier. Yeah. Because this is actually what's happening at a state level in China. Yeah. It's not what you're seeing on TikTok. It's not China's 3,000 years ahead. It's oh, yeah. Not it's like, not like, oh, look at the high-speed rail. This is the... This is what's happening. It's a mass. You understand? It's a massive slap in the face to your intellect and to your understanding and trust. I should say. Yeah. Right? Xi Jinping uh, thought learning app for your fetal yes. baby yes. in your stomach. It's gonna sing you lullabies. It better not be in your stomach. Well, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, in your womb. Yeah, obviously, yeah. you know. Well, some people. No, but seriously though, like. Yeah, but some people. Yeah, sure. Anyway, the might fact, be in their stomach. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yes. You know, the soup place. Oh yeah, that's right. Anyway, gross, yeah, gross, yeah. gross. It's yeah, real. let's it's continue real. on. Yeah. It's <clears throat> now the baby is born. She app accompanies the baby to grow up <laughs> together. Okay, so yeah. Look at this look at this image. Mm. They're all there to learn about this app. Yeah. So this wonderful app, you you play the Xi Jinping mm. thought where he's, you know, probably in his bullshit voice because he always sounds like so like, like he's fall asleep. Rrr, that's rrr. the lullaby. Yeah, that's he's maybe it's just like him talking, talking about like <laughs> or something, whatever <laughs> yeah. the hell he says. He's going to have some bullshit. You know, he probably came up with the Xi Jinping thought when he's just like drunk up by just sitting on the toilet and he's like, the walls are white. There's water on the floor. Yeah. Writing that down. It's not even, it's not even that artistic. Dude. No, it's, it's just, just very junk. literal crap. It's, junk, yeah. it's like in order to, you know. I translated in the entire textbook. Yeah, I know. By hand. We're going to see some of yeah. it. So you can see firsthand what we're talking about. But 
So you, you teach this to your fetal baby, and then as soon as the baby's born, you're blasting this crap. And they're growing up with this subliminal shit in their mind all yeah. the time. It's terrible. It so, okay. Now my baby has become a cute fan of She App. I'm Yang Jinping, invite you to join the Xi Jinping um, Hainan branch. Oh, wait, what? App branch. The what branch? Hainan. What is that? Or who's in Hainan? Oh, we know uh, who's in Hainan. Oh, not this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pearl I pressed White the beaches. wrong one. Pearl, okay. Pearl White Beaches. Hainan, actually, for those of you who don't know, is quite important when it comes to Chinese government. Oh, yes. It there's is. a lot of like, um, you know, like it's intelligence kind of like where they're and setting stuff. up all their crap. Now. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, important stuff that goes on there. So, this Absolutely. is another uh, example of that. Okay. What? Learn parties, the parties of CCP's uh, history on the client side. Learn the party's history. Illuminate minds. Uh, work on practical matters, create new situations. And there, well, oh yeah, there's the She app. There's the actual app itself that they're busy uh, promoting on a state level. <coughs> Ta-da! Isn't that awesome? It is. Well, everybody, do you want to become like a mindless slave to a communist authoritarian government? This is how you start. Treat your kids, your unborn children to this. Mm -hmm. You know how they say some people play like classical music yeah. to their children or this whatever? Is the, this, this is, is the, the Communist Party's version of that. <laughs> play absolute <laughs> drivel from Xi Jinping to your kid. And then as it grows up, it listens to this too That's and repeat. really messed up if you think about it's it. It's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's talk a bit about it because you translated some of this. Do you want to explain what's going on here? Yeah. So there's this big campaign in schools to go around and make the kids say things to prove that they are Chinese. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they would go around. The teacher would basically, basically go around and say, 说一句话,你证明你是中国人. So, like, prove, say something yeah. that proves you're Chinese. And the, that you're the, really Chinese. Yeah. The, the students would applaud if it was a good one. We've got a couple examples here. And this is part of the Xi Jinping thought campaign. Right, right. If my beliefs had a color, they would be China red. Zhongguohong, which means like kind of Communist Party of China. Yeah, Communist red. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, that's true. What do they say? Better better dead than red? Yeah, or vice well, versa. Something like that. Better, yeah. <laughs> better red than dead? I don't yeah, think, I think so. It's it's better. Like, I'd rather be a communist than die. Oh, like is that it? Revolution's happening, you know what mm. I mean? Yeah. Well, either way. It could be the other way around, too. Yeah. You could go either way. Mm hmm. I, I also feel like if you're a little girl at school who's probably like 10 years old or, yeah. or something, you shouldn't be thinking about shit like that. Not our fault. No, and that's We're that's the problem. Do it. Well, especially since <laughs> like the womb. Yes. If that's the indoctrination. This is true. Okay, what's this little girl going to say? Let's get out say of here. Say something to prove you're Chinese. I'll just read over it. Yeah. <clears throat> we got a free COVID vaccine. <laughs> that's <laughs> just prove you're Chinese. Yeah, well, we got a COVID vaccine too, yeah. the free one. Yeah, I didn't prove I was Chinese. Though. No, no. Although, you know, some people think that I pretend to be Chinese or whatever. What was that like weird shill? It was like this guy who pretends he's a Chinese. Yeah, what was that about? I can't remember, but he was oh. like, it's weird. Did he say that? Yeah, I remember. That oh. like, that electric fanboy guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> no idea. <clears throat> but yeah, so apparently if anyone got a free COVID vaccine out there, that proves that you're really Chinese. You better watch out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, now you can say that. Yes. To, according to China. Let's see what's next. Anyway. So this is the, the thoughts of Xi Jinping. So I... Um, I took. I got a hold of the. Um, By the way, if you textbook. if you unironically mm. ever bought and read this book, I really don't like you. <laughs> well, I mean, I think yeah, unironically. I mean, unironically, you if you definitely... actually did it for like, uh, I'm gonna learn something yes. useful. I think you should probably just read it online, not give money to the CCP. Probably. Like, if you want to learn what it is. You know how they pushed mm. this book so much mm. when I was in China. Yeah. They try to force it down. They were trying to give it away for free to me as a foreigner. They try to push it everywhere. Every, dude, in the airports, yeah. it'll be a, like Bookshops. a bookstore. It'll be like a bookstore, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh, let me see what's going to be in here. You go to the bookstore, you buy like a car magazine. I'll buy a car magazine and yeah. I usually buy The Economist. And then yeah. I read that on the plane. Mm -hmm. In China, you better believe none of that stuff's allowed, yeah. right? You go in there and I kid you not, a few times it was only displays of Xi Jinping thought. Yeah. Like that covered everything. Mm -hmm. 
outside and inside of the bookstore in the airport. Yep. Any any place that was like with lots of foreigners, you'd yep. find this book in somewhere. Yep. Like you go to a coffee shop or something, it's there. Yes. It's there for you to look at and read. Um, and, you know, it's really funny. Is some CCP shills actually like carry it around like a Bible. Yeah, I saw that. You remember? Yeah. We saw that. And they make sure it's like in their shots. Yeah, just to like prove their loyalty to the party. Dude, it's so mm. sad. I know, it's Imagine terrible. that's your life. Is you have to masquerade that you even ever open that book once because yeah, exactly. you never opened it no no it's just up there in your cubby mm -hmm. in your in your van or yeah whatever. exactly yeah it's so <laughs> pathetic yeah whatever you're doing yeah, yeah. so let's uh, let's continue on are we going to prove some more yeah we'll do some more okay so say something to prove your chinese and get, get get us out of there um i have no regrets entering life as a chinese and leaving life as a chinese person that's, I mean, imagine making a kid say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why is your nationality so important to you that you're teaching 10-year-old kids mm -hmm. that dying as a Chinese person is incredibly important to your existence? How? Do, by the way, how do you change? <laughs> yeah, I guess you naturalize. Well, I, I suppose <laughs> you can, but you're still always going to be a Chinese person, no, right? No, uh, no. Eth ethnically. Ethnically, yeah. Ethnically. But you know they're yeah, not Yeah, but they're you. talking no. about the nationality. You never separate you, the state yeah, from you the can't. nationality. You can't, yeah, not no. in China. Yeah, it's kind of sad to be saying th things like that. My nationality is not important to me. You know, it's not at all. It's, not at all. it's the individual is what in, what's important to me when I meet people. Yeah, imagine meeting someone and they're like... Imagine basing someone based on their nationality, like yes. judging them solely based on their yeah, nationality. Yeah, imagine if I met someone and they're like... Mm -hmm. Uh, they're like, I'm from, um, I'm from Czech Republic. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I'm out. Yeah, sorry, exactly. dude. I don't like Czechs. You yeah, exactly. I mean? It's so dumb. It's ridiculous. Anyway, mm -hmm. the fact that they have to say this phrase, what does that tell you? What does that actually tell you? Well, I mean, it tells you that they're breeding nationalism. It also tells you that there are millions of Chinese people that, that leave China. Yes. And they have to indoctrinate kids to make them not want to do that. Yes. Because... China has not provided a country that Chinese people even want to stay in. Yes, given the opportunity. Look at the immigration records. Given the opportunity, 99% of Chinese people, if you walked up to them on the street and there were no strings attached, and you're like, would you like to go to... Yeah, I mean, they'll never give you a straight answer. Yeah, like that, if, but... would you like... But no, if, if you genuinely yes. gave them an opportunity. Because, yes. look, we've had, we've had these conversations behind closed doors with our Chinese friends, and they will say, of course. Like, if they had the opportunity to go to the UK or yeah. Canada or, you know, anywhere in the developed world, they'd do it. Through brainwashing, that is, I would drop that figure way lower now. Yeah, sure. But it's... Uh, but in general, like, by and large, like, given the opportunity... The, the majority. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh... You know, you have the, the brainwashing of Xi Jinping thought is to make sure everyone is uh, Chinese. So you have this uh, the Uyghurs. This Uyghur uh, population that's being brainwashed from a young age. You know, they put their parents in the camps. Yeah. And they take the children, they round them up. And it's so sad, like the videos you don't want to see. They round them up and they put them in these camps, these mm -hmm. uh, forced education camps, and they make them say that they're Chinese. Because yeah. they're not. They're ethnically Uyghur people. Right. Yeah, what's the Xi Jinping Xin Shi? This is the one I. Uh, this is the one I translated. Okay. I translated. Welcome every page of the Xi Jinping right. thought. Okay. Uh, anyway, you can listen to my voice. Okay. For a this new era intro. for okay. socialism with Chinese characters. The textbook in schools. Mm -hmm. On this page, we can see it says, "There is a great nation in the east of the world called China. Her name is the People's Republic of China. It's our mother country. We are all Chinese." Uncle Xi Jinping says, he says, loving your country is the deepest and longest, most important emotion in your life. It's a person's basic morality, and it's how you become successful. So this is just one of many pages. I translate yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, you've That's got not a whole video. Thing. But um, the point I wanted to show with that is that Xi Jinping thought for adults was distilled into a forced curriculum now. All the way from the bottom. Yeah, kids always had nationalist like uh, nationalist agendas for some yeah. of them from a young age, but now it's specifically Xi Jinping thought. So it's not just hey, you're going to learn Marx and no. you know Lenin and all that crap in school because they forced that on the yeah. kids. I remember that yeah. and that whole love the party. You know, you get that in all countries. So you know, you'll you'll have flag raising and stuff or whatever, and sing stand up and sing the national anthem in in a lot of countries. Not all countries, a lot of countries. In China, they get up in the morning and they sing the national anthem. They have a flag raising ceremony for the Chinese flag and they red pledge. Yeah, they have the red handkerchiefs. They pledge allegiance <laughs> to the Communist Party. They pledge yeah. their devotion and love to the Communist Party of China. Yeah, not the country. Not to China, yeah. to the Communist Party yeah. of China. And that's the, the creepy thing. 
you know? It's also much deeper than that because you have entire classes dedicated to the thought of one man. Yeah, of course. And I think that's where you can differentiate things because, you know, when I grew up, we had a national anthem. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the ruling party is or, you know, who's who the government is. You, It's the national anthem about the country. An American same. Exactly uh, national same. anthem is about the country, not about like, oh, the Democrats or the Republicans nope. or Biden or Trump or whatever. Nope. It's about the country. Yeah. In China, it's about the party. Yes. You know what I mean? Anyway, what's this that you got going on here? So now on to the next part. This is about uh, how China oh, the teen, teen, teen pregnancies. Can you make this big real quick? Because I have to, I'm not bragging. I don't mm -hmm. brag, but I will say that Winston and I have been calling this for a very long time now. Good. I was hoping, I was thinking you were going to say like, I, teen pregnancies. I know all about that. I'm yes. not going to brag here, but Winston you know, and I got fair pregnant number. When we were a little younger. <laughs> When we were teens. Yeah, no, but seriously. Um, um, so anyway, listen. Mm. We've watched China go from the one-child policy, forced abortions, to the yeah. two-child policy, to the three-child policy, yeah. to now incentivizing people to have children. And yes. we called that at some point, because of the demographic collapse, the fact that China's not replacing itself, the fact that there's too many old people and there's not enough people yeah. that make enough money in the, in the younger age bracket to take care of those people and lead the country. Yep that they're going to have to do something to reverse all these horrible policies that, that uh, the previous leaders had. Yes. And so we are like, well, it is a one-party authoritarian state. We know China does crazy, crazy things. It won't be out of the realm of possibility that people will start being forced or penalized for not having babies. Right. And we will start to see this idea that you should get married later and first find a career and stuff to go out the window and start promoting that younger people have children. That's and right. we've been seeing inklings that China and the Chinese government is starting to get rid of the idea that you need to be married and successful to have children now. Yeah. And it's starting to be tested and kind of uh, massaged into public ideology that this is okay. Yeah. And they're trying to see how the public uh, reacts to this. So what they did was, in this little village in, in Sichuan, mm -hmm. they put out this um, this document, this, yeah. this notice, public notice, that they're giving away free um, folic acid to women of childbearing age, ages 15 to 49, right? Yeah. And so people are like, what do you mean ages 15 to 49? Because this is at a pregnancy clinic, right? Yes. And people are like, wait, so you want 15-year-olds to get pregnant? Yeah. And so they were like, wait a minute. So they, they, they quickly, quickly put out this propaganda to combat this. Okay, yeah. Uh, I just want to put it, it in the background. Okay, I'll get a small uh, while, while I talk about this. You okay. It's got pretty low volume, actually. It's, it's pretty high. I'm going to lower it even more. Give me a second. But basically, they had to emergency say, oh, it was just because we were not clear. And there was multiple different propaganda yeah. outlets. That, you can see they're 15 to 49 yes. sway. So that means, you know, ages of 15 to 49. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what they were doing was they're putting out multiple things to combat this. They're like, oh, actually, the department wasn't clear. What they meant was childbearing age just means, like, biologically, that's when women can give birth. So that's what it would be given. But still, if you get them the folic acid, like a supplement, then you still have to provide your marriage certificate and your the fact that you're legally married and all this kind of stuff. They're like, we are definitely following the law of the Communist Party of China, right? Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a knee-jerk reaction because you can see this is deliberate. Yes. You can see that this is kind of like, I wonder if the public will be chill with having like younger people give birth, right? Because this yeah. is kind of what we've been seeing the party going in that direction. By the way, the age of consent in China, I believe, is 14. Yeah. That um, was uh, for women were, anyway. Yeah, people were talking about that in mm -hmm. uh, what's it called in the subreddit, mm. and I I don't think that's something that China even takes seriously to be honest, because there's all those cases of those like creepy uncles and bad mm -hmm. people in villages and stuff who just get away with this nonstuff. Remember we went to that village um, where that girl was I won't even get the details yeah, by yeah. the party official there, yeah, 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 and yeah. it was completely swept under the rug, mm -hmm. and that whole village went crazy, but nothing was done about it. Yeah, because you can't in that kind of situation. But anyway, long story short, um, they're trying to rectify this by saying like, oh, it's just a mistake. Like they didn't mean that; they just meant biologically. That's what they meant at that age. I like the like, excuse they said. Well, you know, if the mother's going to go in for these vitamins, you may as well, or the family member, yeah. may as well give to the younger, yeah, like women they, too. Oftentimes, families go together. And but so. one one <laughs> thing, okay. One thing that's interesting is the Chinese translation of folic acid is yes one. Yes one, right? yeah. Which means, what does it mean? Yes one means pregnant acid, sour. pregnant sour, pregnant yeah, acid. Swan, yeah, swan means acid. But yeah. So sour basically yeah. means acid. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's literally translates to pregnancy acid. Yes. So pregnancy medicine. Yeah, so they can't say, oh, this is a vitamin something. for something No, else. they're like, we... 
they put out a notice. We'll be giving free pregnancy, yeah. you know, acid At, to from a, from a pregnancy department of a hospital. Yeah, to fifteen year olds. Yes. So yeah, so, they're trying to they're trying to hmm. do this. And look, we're not far off from the point where it's going to be like a government mandate that you must get pregnant. I'm I'm calling it, and yeah. that it's things like this that show that this is kind of what they're teasing in. Mm -hmm. um, and again, there's there's some propaganda outlets that are saying, oh, they just mistyped it, and then they went from mistyped to no, it was delivered, but that's not what they. Meant. in china <laughs> it's like for the longest time and this is what pisses me off a lot yeah for the longest time it's been my body not my choice yes okay so many Either way so many progressive people in the west praise china for yeah. some freaking reason this whole like women hold up half the sky or whatever that's bullshit don't forget not long ago really not long ago like what 20 years ago they were still forcing abortions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 20 years ago, dude. Way more recent than no, that. No, it's more recent. Yeah. When yeah. was it that the one child policy ended? Uh, uh, we were there. 2015? Yeah, we were there. So Let's see. I'll just look I remember when talk, yeah. I remember when it ended, it was like a thing. Um, but yeah, so when 2015, was 2015, I called it. Yeah, nice. That's right. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. So as, as recent as 2015, if you had a child, yes. you already had one child, you tried to have another one, they would forcefully abort your baby. Yes. And they would hunt you down. Yes. You living in a village? They used to have those abortion vans. Don't get too around. detailed because yeah. we don't get age Yeah, we don't want to get age restricted. But I'm saying, like, anyone who thinks China's a progressive place and who um, praises China for certain things, just get that out of your head. They will kill your baby or they will make you have a baby. So, this is coming yeah, soon. Yeah, exactly. So the fact that they would forcefully, you know, abort your baby, no matter how long term it was, okay, the fact that they would do that without any choice on your behalf. They've you can't... Been Imagine you're like, oh, my body, my choice. They'll be like, no, bitch, our body, our choice. Yeah, that's that's what the CCP does. Yeah, it's crazy because it's the opposite of a progressive thing. It's you yeah. have no control in either direction, and they've mm -hmm. been teasing getting rid of like prophylactics and things like this, or the promotion of them of sure. birth control and stuff. It's slowly happening, and mark our words. I mean, how many times have we been wrong about what the party ends up doing? Mm -hmm. It's very clear because you can watch it when you're in China. Yeah, you see when it happen when they're testing policy. This is kind of how it rolls out. Yeah. So they're testing it. They've been offering incentives like, you know, for instance, you can get discounts on, on real estate deals and things. If you have a second child now, you can get – they've got all these stupid tax breaks and things. So now it's the incentive phase yeah. where it's like the carrot, and soon it's going You'll to be see. the stick. Soon it'll be like, okay, you must be – if you're not pregnant by this age – you know, then there are penalties. So you're going to have to pay fines. They're probably – then after that, they're going to start actually forcing – people to go into fertility clinics and get artificially inseminated. Who and knows? Pe and people can say, oh, that's extreme. How could you guys possibly know that's ridiculous? Guys, do you remember when China said that they weren't going to be harsh with uh, zero COVID policy and then firemen couldn't even get inside burning buildings without COVID tests and people burned to death? Yep. Do you remember when people were lot welded into their homes and mm -hmm. now China doesn't even want people to talk about COVID? Yep. Let's just not forget what country we're dealing with here. The craziest, mm -hmm. most batshit country in the world. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Of course they'll do that. Yeah. We're, we're calling it. So, How yeah. is forcing someone to have a kid... Any more of a moral problem with uh, with uh, what's it called with women's like you know body rights, reproductive rights, than yeah. forced abortions? And if they were doing that on a wide scale, then why would they not do that? Yeah, you understand? It's yeah. the same thing. It's the same right? thing in the opposite way. You're taking way. a woman, you're taking away her reproductive rights. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what direction it's in. So I don't know why people are arguing that. Oh, of course, they're not going to go that far. No. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah, they will. They yeah, already absolutely. did. Yeah, absolutely, you know? they will. Anyway. anyway, I think you've got something to say about our friend Jordan. I do. Okay, so what do you got to say about our friend Jordan? Uh, Jordan Harbinger, friend of the show, yeah. had a fantastic episode. Um, he has this thing called Skeptical Sunday on his podcast, and he did a whole thing on fast fashion. You know what fast fashion is? Slave labor. Well, yeah, I mean, like, you have to explain the product. Well, if, yeah. Because <laughs> you've covered this. Yeah, okay, so we're talking about things like Shine. Is it Shane or Shine? Or? Shane, yeah, Shein. Did you see how cringe that thing they did where they took the influencers to go, like, yeah. Tour their factory? Yeah. Holy crap. Dude, the fact that they're doing that shows, what does that show you? That they're, they're <laughs> oh, guilty. They're it's guilty, bad. yeah. But basically, fast fashion is like, oh, you want something from China, you order it, they get it made, it gets sent to you real quick. Yes. And it's slave labor and forced labor is always involved in it's, that kind it's of thing. It's the idea that you can get something that looks like a name brand hot item that's very expensive, maybe from Versace or something, yes. but it's like $2 from yeah. Timu or mm -hmm. one of these brands, right? And it looks the same and might as well get it. It's not good quality, but you know it's not good quality because you're going to wear a couple times for an Instagram post exactly. or a TikTok video and you throw it out. It's all you need. All right. So 
um, he did this great thing about that. It's about how the fashion industry is actually a huge contributor to carbon emissions. Think about the shipping costs. Think oh, yeah. about all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, the shipping, you know, belching out all that crap. Those container ships are the worst polluters in the world. Yes. Remember, one container ship puts out the same amount of pollution as 50, 50, million, million, 50 million cars. cars yeah. Obviously during its lifetime, but 50 million yes. cars. Seriously, sink those pieces of shit so that we cannot have smog laws anymore. <laughs> I know, right? No more container ships drive like a 20 liter V8 and you yes. can take of the catalytic converters and smile all day and you'll in, in never British people can actually drive like cool cars now. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> there'll be no smog and congestion fees yes. just get rid of those just sink those things for sure they're so annoying um water yeah. pollution waste all that think about the factories that make these cheap products uh, never China. mind the forced labor and the yes. sweatshops and everything yeah forced labor he talked to nuri turkle about this he talked to peter zahan about this he did a whole thing about this whole kind of industry on this stuff mm. there's there's a video version of this in general with four different experts and then there's the yeah. audio version which is just about the fast fashion stuff um, yeah. it exploits women and workers and all kinds of cheap labor yeah. uh, for sometimes forced labor and how yeah. we can move yeah. that away from this Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, links are in the description. Yes. Go check out the Jordan Harbinger show. Don't it's, miss that, yeah. it's a fantastic podcast. Yeah. Go say the China show sent us. We'd appreciate that. I'm sure he'd appreciate it too. Yes. Um, and man, that you know, that influencer thing where they flew them over, it made me so angry. I wanted to actually yes. cover it, but a lot of people covered it. So I thought, hey, yeah. you know what? Let's just deal with what we normally deal with and let other people cover it. But when you, I watched it and they like made it such a propaganda tour. And they had everything looking like spick and span as if this is how they actually run their operation. Hired some actors to pretend to be sewing in a pristine, clean environment and stuff, you know, and like having all these beautiful samples on the wall and, and all this nonsense. And you look at this and you're like, who is dumb enough to fall for this? And then I thought, oh, fashion influencers. Yeah, what a surprise. Yeah, of course they're dumb enough to fall for that. Of course. They're fast <laughs> fashion influencers. Their exactly. entire industry relies on this crap. Yeah. Oh, anyway. well. Yeah. So go check them out. Uh, what do we got next? Are we moving on to our next segment? We are. Wumao Corner. Yes. Okay. Wumao Corner, everybody. This is where we talk about the Wumaos and all the nonsense that they do and the <laughs> the haters and all the Nimasala nonsense. And what have we got for Wumao Corner today? Let's see. Okay. Well, for a media pack. It's pulling up. It's getting there. Here we go. What do we got? Oh. <laughs> So our video last week. Yeah, if you had seen it last week, we yeah. did the Barbie thing. Um, yeah. It got age restricted. We went through that. Yes. And I have no idea what would be age restricted. And I, I lost my shit. Yeah. I went back home. I was like, this is ridiculous. So I went to go fight it, right? Yeah. And I talked to creator support. Let me tell you what usually happens. Mm -hmm. Usually what happens is they'll be like, okay, let's ask, you're a big YouTuber, let's yeah. escalate this. I mean, first of all, it did get a copyright strike, uh, not a strike, Last a copyright right. claim because claim. we used the Barbie um, footage. Okay, okay from that the was trailer. the first bad But that's thing, yeah. fine, okay, yeah, that's like something whatever. we accept. You know, that's how YouTube works. You use somebody else's stuff if it's a big name studio or something. Yes. yes. Um, you can use it, and if you use it under fair use, in other words, if you chop it up enough, and yes. then it's actually okay, and you won't even get a copyright yeah. claim. But we played the entire... Um, yeah, so whatever. You know, preview. So that's fine. That doesn't mean that your video gets um, really penalized. It just means you can't make money off the video. And we're which fine we're, with that. We're used to that I mean, anyway. We're not fine with it, but yeah. it's like... Hey, look, a it. huge chunk of our videos are like that anyway. Yes. Okay, so, so we're whatever. So but, it hits yeah. that. Yeah. But then the age restriction happens. I'm like, no way. So I go through that and, and I can, feel it. Can you explain why age restriction is so bad? What happens is it, YouTube stops recommending your video. Yes. It can't come up on feeds. It won't come up on your feed anymore, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you can't have to be, be signed yeah. in. Can't be embedded. Yeah, you have to be signed in to watch it, and you can't embed it or share the link with anyone. Yeah, yeah. So it kills the video completely. Yeah. This thing was on a skyrocketing trajectory, by the way. Sure. And all of a sudden it goes, eh, you watch the analytics, right? Yeah. So I'm like, what's going on? So I go through the entire thing. I'm like, there is nothing in here that is age restriction, right? Yeah. So I appeal it. Yes. I went through, I did my due diligence, right? Sure. The, within minutes... They send me a, 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 what's it called? A decision. It goes, we've carefully reviewed your video and we maintain that it's it should be age restricted. So I'm like, it's a so two you went hour... through a two hour video in five minutes? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. So I get on creator support. Mm -hmm. I'm like, usually what happens is they'll be like, okay, all right, we made a mistake. And they, they undo it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> this time they go, we went through, can you give me five minutes? We went through it and we said, yes, this is 100% age restricted and we will not budge on this. And I'm like, well, I need to escalate this through email or something because like this needs to go to the top. And they're like, yeah. you can't escalate this. We've already made our decision. They're, we know that you're disappointed. And I'm like, no. Tell, and I said, okay. 
the whole point of YouTube is that it's going to tell you what is bad so then you can avoid making that this mistake, decision, yeah. mistake in the first place. So they send me this guideline thing and they're like, okay, read through this. And I'm like, okay, well then tell me what part it is and then I won't make the same mistake, right? Yes. And they're like, no, we can't do that. So yeah. they age restricted our video mm -hmm. internally. Yes. Internally, someone made this decision. Well, obviously, because it had been mass flagged. We showed last time sure. actually how the, the Chinese, um, you know, Wumao, 50 Cent Army, yeah. they flag our posts on Reddit and say that it's involuntary pornography or some, whatever random thing just to try and get it taken down. So they do that to our videos. Yeah. They throw everything against the wall hoping something sticks. Right. They obviously got a sympathetic reviewer who was like, well, there's so many flags on this thing. Let me take a look. And they're like, oh, they're on the side of the caution. And just but there's this. no caution because there's nothing bad in it. And that's the part that we can prove because, yes. you know, we've got China Fact Chasers, yeah. which is our, for lack of a better term, our Clips channel. Yeah. It's not just clips, though. Every topic that we talk about on the show here gets cut out, yes. gets edited. So extra B-roll and stuff's added to it, and then it's uploaded to China Fact Chasers. So all of the different segments from that show were uploaded to China Fact Chasers, yes. and none of them got age-restricted or banned. Yes. So there is no content from that nope. episode that was actually... Nope. Bad. That could be age restricted. Yeah, they. Met. The worst part is, is that mm -hmm. not that it happened in the first place. Because I get the mass flag thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. They should be rectifying that. But let's say they didn't. Yeah. Then they could go and oh shit, sorry guys. Like mm -hmm. you know, like they usually do. Oh shit, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's actually, actually fine. okay. Yeah. This time they said no. Decision final. So we upload the same clips and guess what? They were fine. Yes. So they're, you're they, full of shit. Yeah, they're full of shit. They won't tell us what it is that's age-restrictable. And they always do before. Yeah. So this is the first time they won't tell us, and they, they, kept, they keep it a mystery, and they won't escalate it. Yeah. It's, it's bullshit. Yeah, it's, there's, some, there's something going on. Some there's malarkey. a sim sympathetic internal reviewer there. Something. Yeah. Something. I don't know what, but you can't say you manually, carefully reviewed it in five minutes. Sorry, mm. guys. Twice now? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. So... Thank you for the people that actually support us because we got hit three times on that video. Yes, yes. It's ridiculous. It's such a safe video. Yeah. Hey, look, it's just a part and parcel of the YouTube life. Okay. All, yeah. all creators have to face this one way or the other. And it's very frustrating. We just wanted to air our frustrations. But we'd also like to tell you about our Monday show, our VIP show. It's called Shaban Ho. Best way um, to support us. Yeah. This is the best way to support us. And people do not well, want to get involved in anyone else's problems because yeah. it might affect them. Yeah, they don't want to get sued. They don't want to be... Just don't want oh, to hang on a second, though. Volume's really low. Uh, this is, for those of you who don't know, this is what you would have missed on Monday. So we'll show you a quick... We always like to show you a little quick it's, preview. But it's still there if you want to subscribe now. Yeah, of course. Okay, let's... Doesn't go away. Let's take a look. This is what you would have missed. In China, people do not want to get involved in anyone else's problems because yeah. it might affect them. Yeah, they don't want to get sued. They don't want to be They just don't want their life to... They don't want to... They don't want to get up. She passed out from heat exhaustion. There are crowds there. And not a single person uh, goes to help. Right? The security guy's like, I'm, like, I'm out of here. here. This is not my job. Dude looks over. He's like, whatever. Everybody's like driving past. It's normal for that to Look, happen. Look, woman by the walks way. past. She's like, oh, okay. Like I said, it's the go to in China. It's the, it is the norm to do this. Okay. Yeah, to look. <laughs> Today in this video, I'm going to share with you guys how to have dirty talk in bed. Open your legs widely. Show me your private parts, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that... it was a it was a serious one, but it was also a really fun one too. Yeah. Uh, so if you're interested in checking out our private show on Monday, please feel free to go over to patreoncom forward slash ADV podcasts. And of course, only if you have the means, we'd love to see you there. It is the absolute best way to support us. And uh, we've got quite uh, a tight-knit community uh, over there. It's uh, really fun. So hopefully we'll see you there on Monday. Yes, and uh, yeah, it's a full-on show. It's the stuff we can't talk about on YouTube, and it's a full-on another show. If you like the China show, it's more of the China show. Yes. Okay, now it's time for us to hit Worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, uh, specifically with regards to China. And this one has just been <laughs> pissing me off it's left so, and right. It's so insane. Mm -hmm. What do we got? Everybody knows that the Fukushima plant number one, you know, Daiichi, you know, the big disaster that happened because of that uh, typhoon or whatever. What is that? That um, yeah, tidal wave tidal thing. Wave, yeah. What do you call it? What's, what is the proper, proper tsunami? Tsunami. Is yeah. it a tsunami? Mm. Yeah. So the tsunami came along, okay? Messed up this nuclear reactor. Huge disaster. The whole area has been evacuated. People can't live there anymore. Now, 
there's a whole bunch of contaminated water, obviously, because mm. that's how nuclear plants work. And they've been treating it now for years and years and years. And they're going, they've been planning to release this into the ocean. Yes. Okay. Not my favorite thing in the world that nuclear contaminated water is going to go into the ocean. Not my favorite thing. In Probably the world. not. No. Um, but you know what? It's going to happen. But you know who really is pissed off about this is China. Yeah. You know why? Because they're making a huge political mess out of this. Yeah, actually, just before you get into that, I just want everyone to know that when this Fukushima thing happened, everyone in China freaked out. Yeah. And they started buying salt. Yes. Like crazy. And then salt prices went through the roof. Yeah. And I remember my mother-in-law spent like $30 on like a packet of salt or something. And yes. she was like, was, wasn't this a good bargain? Because she like yeah. paid less than other people. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think so. Nope. Um. Okay, so there's this crazy thing. They're going to be releasing this uh, treated water. It's, less, uh, it's estimated to be less than 22 trillion, whatever the hell a becquerel is. That's a big number, I bet. Yeah, and the pre-2011 level is 2.2 uh, trillion becquerels, and I guess that's what's been released already. So, so the becquerel level was what is now? Is now what? Well, the treated 22. water that's, that, that's going to be released. It hasn't been released yet. Okay, so before the disaster, it was 2.2 trillion becquerels. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then after what's going to be released is 22 trillion. Yeah, less than 22. Okay. So it's probably like 21.999. They just say less because it makes them sound a little better. By the way, this is where this guy comes in. Water cooler diplomacy has been every single day. Let me, sorry. Every single day he's been going on about it is irresponsible for China to release nuclear. Japan. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He wouldn't say China. No, it's irresponsible it for, yeah, <laughs> for Japan to release Nuclear contaminated water. And every day he goes on about this. Yes. Him and the Chinese foreign ministry. And okay, rightly so. If you're a neighboring country, you obviously don't want nuclear waste dumped in the water. You don't want Becquerels in there. No, screw those Becquerels. They'll hurt the Becquerels. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, yeah. And Makuro in (laughs) Japanese is tuna, which is weird. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, For whatever reason. Anyway. So... Oh, by the way, people are so confused. Yeah. My mother-in-law and people were buying salt because they were afraid it was going to be contaminated by the... the... I didn't finish that sentence. Right, They're right. like, why are they buying salt? No, di- didn't they think it could be used as a, as a cure for there was, radiation? There was two. Yeah. First, the first thing was like, all the salt comes from this these salt mines in the area, and the salt comes from the ocean too. So mm. the sea salt will be contaminated because of the nuclear reactor, and our right. sea, we share the same sea. Then people are like, if we eat a lot of salt, we can actually protect yeah, ourselves. Yeah, and like salt can be it. used to like decontaminate yeah. radiation or something. So it's two is a two pronged thing. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, so the fact of the matter is that China's been making a big hoo ha on the international stage, and all the foreign ministry has been complaining the hell out of, hey, Japan's going to release this stuff. But it turns out that China releases far more nuclear contaminated water in their own water. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's take a look at some of the nuclear power plants here. Okay, so the we'll start at the bottom here. The the Yangjiang uh, nuclear plant. I've gone, but past that. Yep. Actually, on the way to Hainan. Yep. About 112 trillion becquerels. Is that in 2021? 2021. So in 2021, they released 112 tr- trillion, and Japan's planning to release less than 22. Yes. And then we've got the uh, Ningde nuclear power plant, which will release about 102 trillion becquerels. Yeah. You know, we're probably mis- mispronouncing this. It's probably got a different name. It's becquerels I mean, now. Becquerel, you know, becquerels for the mackerels, you know. No one's yelled at us. Okay, good. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the, the Qinshan Phase 3 nuclear power plant. Sounds pretty cool, by the way, Phase 3. Yeah, well, I also think, you know, like they say, Fukushima number one. Yeah. It's so lame, but in Japanese, like, Fukushima Daiichi. Yeah, Sounds yeah, yeah, better, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Sounds more cool. It does. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Sounds like you're saying Daiichi. Yeah, like, oh, like together. hit together. No, <laughs> you know, dai, dai is, is da, you know, okay. big got one it. or whatever. So uh, 143 trillion becquerels. That's a lot. 143 trillion compared to less than 22. Yeah. And that was in 2020, right? Yikes. And uh, of course, you've got the Hong Yanhe nuclear plant. It's released about 90 trillion we becquerels. We know exactly where that is. That's yep. in uh, Yantai, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, we've been past most of these. We've been in that. I've yeah. been right next to that. We filmed yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, guys, China has been releasing far more nuclear contaminated water into the seas in that area than Japan ever has or ever plans to. So why do they keep going on about it? Because, just like everything else, they hide all their own data. This is data that you can't hide, though, because you can take a reading. Yes. You know, it's pretty easy. They hide everything from the rest of the world. And then they blame other people because it's an easy way to sow division. Called? What is that called, actually? Oh, it's called... Projection! That's 
That's correct. Yeah. Water cooler diplomat has been going wild about it, hasn't he? He has. I have not seen a single day where this guy, you know, has not moaned and bitched and piss and vinegar about Japan's nuclear water. It's so... I want him to reply. It doesn't have to be to you, to anyone that keeps showing him this photo. Yeah, well, there's an article. There's, a, yeah. there's an actual article in uh, Japan Times, which, you know, you can look it up. But um, China has been releasing far more nuclear contaminated water into the seas around there than Japan. Please acknowledge well, that at least. And yeah. say, yes, I don't want, yes, we did a bazillion times more, but still we don't want that too. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe we're say saying that. like it's irresponsible for Japan to release less contaminated water yes. than China does. <laughs> yes, you know? yes. It's like, don't even, why are you even trying to fight us, bro? How about we stop releasing contaminated water? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so for those of you who might be getting caught up in all of this because there's a lot of international brouhaha coming out of China about this nuclear contaminated water out of Japan. Maybe take a look at how bad China is as well. Yes. It's all bad, by the way. Don't release nuclear contaminated water to anyone. A, be a becquerel is one radioactive nucleus decaying per second. There we go. That makes sense. So trillions of seconds. That's going to yeah, take too, literally well, a lifetime. Yeah. Or well, actually multiple, multiple well, You don't want this things. decaying nonsense in your Millions water. Millions of years. Anyway, the fact of the matter is China's a far worse offender when it comes to this. And so, once again, if you live in glass houses, you know, don't throw stones. Yeah, just don't talk about it then. Yeah, how if about you, you shut the hell up, up? You shut up because guess what? We have transparent research around the world. Mm -hmm. So yeah. people are going to be able to talk about it, unlike in China. It's a joke. Yeah. They're losing the plot about how to do propaganda. But you know, the thing is, in China, people don't know. Yeah. They don't know that China's actually releasing far more than Japan ever will. Yeah. So they look at the news, they look at the propaganda, and That's they're like, correct. Japan's evil. Yeah. You know? Shaoruben. Yeah, exactly. Little just... Japan, they call it. Yep. Shaoruben goes, the little Japan ghost. And that's what the Chinese propaganda department's all about, yep. is to other everybody, blame mm -hmm. everyone else, without ever having introspection, without ever yes. once saying like, hey, you know what, maybe we made some mistakes. It's here. unfair when you're trying to be a global leader. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta come to, you gotta be taking a task. Yeah. So we thought we'd just shine some light on that. You can go do some research to confirm that yourself, because yes. it's true. And now it's time for, no, it's not time for that. What are we doing next? We're still on Worldview, sorry. Um, no, we, we never stopped Worldview. It's just, it just a little break there. It just, there was a yeah. break in the thing. So, sorry, coming back. Okay, what do we got here? Do you remember when I uh, had a, a hissy fit yeah. and went crazy about Snapchat? Because yes. what happened is there was a nine-dash line that was including the South China Sea on the on the map of Asia. Yeah, if you're in Taiwan and, and you open it If you're in Taiwan, up. you open it. So, that's bullshit. Yeah. Taiwan doesn't belong to China, right? No. So, I made a huge hissy fit. I reported it. I reported on it. I had mm. other people report it. Yeah, we did it on the we show. We did it on the show. Yeah. We've done multiple things about this, mm -hmm. right? It was actually one of our earlier campaigns. Yeah. And pleased to say, a friend of mine uh, who went to Taiwan to yeah. try um, says that the nine dash line is currently not there. Yeah. So that's great. If you oh, open Snapchat. up Snapchat in Taiwan, it's no longer there. Good kind on you, Snapchat. Well done. I like to think we had a uh, major part in that. Yeah. Snapchat's finally mm. doing something other than facilitating child predators or whatever. Is that what it is? Well, a lot of you get a lot of cases where they like contact through Snapchat. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> you know, interesting. Because you know it's I've pretty not, anonymous. I actually and they can deleted delete my Snapchat because it was uh, back in the day when we were trying to get on all social media, and yeah. I, there was like zillions of people requesting. I was like, all right, I'm out of here. I don't even know how to use it. <laughs> it like goes away. Yeah, yeah it it it's, gets yeah. to a point where you just don't want to mess around with the, I'm too uh, social old media for this stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, Guangzhou. Yeah. Guangzhou, formerly known as Canton, is the capital of Guangdong province where we used to live. So it's the the big sort of Washington DC of that province of China. Yeah. Okay. Uh sure. Well, I mean it's like yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. what would it be like the, It's like a it it would be, be a state capital like Albany to New York. Okay. And yeah. what about uh California where we used to live? What would that be? Sacramento. Like, is it Sacramento? Mm. I didn't know that was a state capital. Yeah. So it's not like an actual cool place like LA or no. Or, you know, San Francisco no. or... I mean, that is a capital of, like, homelessness or something, maybe. But yeah. anyway, anyway yeah, you sorry. get the idea, right? It's a capital city. Yeah. It's one of the four... Uh, San Antonio, Texas. It's like a state capital. Right, I got you. Okay, but in China, Guangzhou is one of the four first-tier cities. Okay, so yes. it's one of the four most important cities in China. Right. Okay, so they've had this... War against motorcycles. It's not Longdong province. It's Guangdong. <laughs> yeah, it's Guangdong. Stop, and you know, like there's in, it's kind of confusing because you know, in Guangdong, there's a city called Dongguan. 
Yes. Which is like just the characters pretty much the other way around. So it's Guang Dong Dong Guan and well, it's different, but whatever, you know, it sounds it's completely it's different. It's different. I know, but it's the sounds. Oh, I see. To so a it's, foreigner. Yeah. yeah. Similar, it's like, yeah. Where, where are you staying? I'm staying in Dong Guan and Guang Dong. Yeah. You know? So anyway, yeah. here's the thing. I remember when I first got to China, 2000, uh, early 2006, right? So there I am. I went to Guangzhou. And they still had these like illegal motorcycle taxis. They'd made them illegal already since 2000. It was actually the first city to ban motorcycles. Yeah. So they made it, made them completely illegal. Actually, no, Shenzhen, uh, I think Shenzhen. No, Guangzhou, it was called the Guangzhou really? Method. Yeah, I have the PDF. Okay, I, I mean, no, I, I believe you, yeah, so, but I it must it. it must have happened, you know, before I got there. So Way before. Yeah, way before. Way so. before. It was like 03. Yeah, because I remember at that time, Shenzhen had actually cleaned them up. You couldn't get motorcycles in Shenzhen nope. anymore. But in, in Guangzhou, they still did, because, you know... It doesn't matter. They came up with a law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guangzhou's, like, far more lawless than Shenzhen, yeah. and it's yeah. far more Swabian, the way things are done there. Yeah. Anyway... So you had these illegal motorcycle taxis that would dart around the place and take you everywhere, but they really severely clamped down and they'd set up blockades and they would like knock them off of we the bikes. Of that, yeah. yeah. Like throwing still rocks at them. The police would be throwing rocks at people they still on motorcycles. Yeah. They anyway. throw traffic cones at their wheels. Yeah, they did all sorts of things. So they got rid of motorcycles. But there was kind of a loophole. When we used to go visit Guangzhou, remember you used to out of nowhere, you would see a lot of disabled vehicles. Yes. So when I say disabled, it's not, not like, down vehicles. yeah, the vehicles aren't disabled. They're for disabled people. <laughs> yes. And they were kind of like these three wheeled motorcycle scooter things. Like a trike. Yeah. And they were orange. Yes. And it was weird because all of a sudden you'd see a lot of people that were disabled. So either they would hire disabled people to do this or they'd pretend to be disabled. They're you get, pretending to be disabled. You get people with crutches. the train station. Yeah, exactly. Time. They'd have like crutches on the side of it, but yeah. they'd never been used type thing. And they're being used as taxis. Yeah. So they would be used as taxis. And I, I mean, come on. You know. I went and how, this. Yeah. How is a disabled person supposed to carry you as a taxi on the back of their yeah. disabled mobile like their yeah. mobility scooter basically it was know? a racket it was a racket because it was a way to get past the motorcycle ban yep because sure they banned all motorcycles but then they couldn't ban disabled people's transport correct because otherwise they couldn't get around right. so they saw this as a loophole and suddenly this like underground mafia taxi disabled person taxi racket started Okay, and it was bizarre because you'd go yeah. there and you'd see tons of these like disabled, disabled people driving around, no more motorcycles, but tons of these three wheeled like yeah. mobility scooter type things <laughs> with carrying you on the back. They They're had like, engines, yeah, take by you. The way. Yeah, yeah. So They're it's, not electric. No, it's not electric. It's got a, a scooter. Like a scooter motor. Yeah. Anyway, they kind of got rid of that. Or got rid of that now, um, and they've clamped down. E-bikes then became popular, and they were legal for a while. Clamped down. No, on e so here's what happened with the e-bike thing. Yeah. They they tried to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. But what happened was they tried to, instead of that, there was so much public outrage, public yeah. outrage. So in Guangzhou in particular, they were like, well, if so many people are going to be upset about this, we need to do something about the car situation. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So then people started to buy cars and they said, wait a minute, plates are too expensive. Yeah, but wait, so wait. Tens of thousands of RMB per plate. Yeah. Be before so we get there, before we get there. The, what I was going to say about the e-bikes is they made them illegal because they were too big. Yeah. The original e-bikes were just like a scooter, like, right. a, and they just put batteries in it. Right. Then they like made regulations that it has to be a tiny thing yes. that can only go a certain speed and has to weigh a certain amount. And they even had scales on the side of the road. I right. remember seeing it. And they would like, because I had a little e-bike, I mm -hmm. had to get a little one. And they'd weigh it. And like if it was over the kilogram, they'd just take it. You'd never get it back. Anyway, yeah. then fast forward to now. Sorry. So the, the people are like, well, let's buy cars. They buy cars, but they're like, wait a minute, tens of thousands of RMB per license plate. That's thousands of US dollars. They can't afford it, right? Yeah. Especially if we're buying some shit Chinese Mianbao Chula. Yeah, which costs less it's worth less than the like license plate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The license plate is like five to ten, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're in a situation then where like people are like, you know what? Screw this. I'm buying e-bikes again. So they're like, all right, all right, public outrage. We'll let e-bikes again, yeah. right? <clears throat> but you have to buy a license plate for the e-bikes like you would a car now. They're not yeah. unregulated anymore, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So the people are like, wait a minute. And then the price got out of control for the e-bike license plates. So people yeah. are like, you know what? Screw this. We're buying wheelchairs. Yes, yeah, so it's gone back to the disabled <laughs> thing, yes. hasn't it? It's always freaking Guangzhou. Because, yeah, when they got rid of those, like, um, so we got some footage in the background. When they got rid of those orange trike disabled mobiles, yeah. Then, of course, wheelchairs, electric wheelchair type things and mobility scooters, kind of like you see, you know, in America when you go to Walmart and yes. you see those like... <laughs> like I love those. those. No, <laughs> yeah. Guangzhou people yeah. are very much uh, more 
creative and stuff. They have more creative outlets because they've been kind of separate from China in many yes, ways, like yes. from Beijing. They the have. Cantonese people. Yeah, they've all, they always like stick it to the man. Yeah. So now these mobility scooters that you normally see in Walmart, like carting around huge people and people with <laughs> disabilities. Well, I mean, I've. It's very very seldom. Know, have, seldom no, you see like a skinny person in one of those I'm just unless saying. they're disabled yeah, yeah if they they're genuinely or, disabled yeah. and it's not just like oh i pant too much when i walk you know what i mean <laughs> yeah well it's true what <laughs> anyway so hey you gotta, yeah. you gotta like Pant, call it like breathing hard. yeah it's like exactly <laughs> you're coming or just breathing hard anyway so um what's going on here is they get these mobility scooters and of course they're not disabled but because the law they hasn't plated yeah the law hasn't yet like come in where you have to register these things as vehicles people yes. are using these to commute to work it's like a little revolution in guangzhou I yeah love, guangzhou's awesome i love their intuition yeah i mean think about it if your e-bike's been banned if you can't afford a car if you're yeah. just like screw it i'll just get one of these <laughs> look at this like guy souping them up and yeah stuff. i know it's great it's gonna be sick yeah. and they're gonna go ape they're gonna start cracking down on these but i just oh, love yeah. this the young people like chilling chilling out riding yeah. these it's so cool it's cool it's i i awesome. like it i'm i'm 100 percent all for that you know you got to find a way yes. in china it's a weird place you know you they make everything illegal that it just makes it so hard to do anything i know but leave it to guangdong yeah especially uh, guangzhou all of guangdong to be like people skirting the law Let's yeah exactly be yeah They're always... it's pretty funny yeah, yeah. yeah okay so how about you explain what's going on here there was a uh, ruling in The Hague that China's claims to the entire South China Sea, including the areas around Vietnam, Philippines, is bullshit. Yeah. Right? So the world needs to operate with open water so that trade can happen. Yes. Open fishing areas for the sovereign countries, open territory. So yeah. that you can't just lay claim to stuff. No, and you can't. build fake islands with mm. military bases on them, right? And then lay claim to other countries' ocean. Yeah. So the Philippines has been going crazy and having protests against China, and they're like, "Hell yeah, keep this keep these waters open, right?" Apparently, July twelfth is West Philippine Sea Day. Yes. Anyway. Now that's a holiday, if ever I heard one. Well, dude, they have a lot to to protest about. Obviously, um, China has absolutely been pushing their weight around. They've been uh, assaulting fishermen. They've been decimating the waters, They're decimating the corals. Not only with just like nuclear contamination, yes. but actually just out fishing and Completely destroying it. Completely yeah. destroying it, and then actually sending. Uh, remember they said our fishing vessels have nothing to do with our navy and then they sent the navy to go protect their fishing vessels yeah and it's bad yeah. right yeah. so the philippines is very anti-china right now yeah um and the leadership looks like it's going in the right direction which is good it's actually yeah. a big uh flip-flop from what was initially predicted yeah anyway um that ruling is being protested by China and they're like, well, no, America is actually just bullying these countries into wanting to protect their waters and keep everything open. But these are the <laughs> countries that wanted this to happen. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones protesting China most fervently, not Americans. No, of course not. It's ridiculous. It's, what is that called? That's called... It's called... Projection! Projection. So, yeah, like you said, the, there was this international ruling to say that China doesn't, no. you know, own this. So. And China's just come out on the anniversary saying, we don't acknowledge that no. international thing. And you're bu you're just bullying countries yeah. to, to so say... So in, in other words, we, we refuse to follow international yes. law. correct. Yet and, again. And I think the world needs to start to realize this little trend that uh, China doesn't follow law. No. They'll pretend to follow if, if it's convenient to them at the time. Sure. So that they can underhandedly build islands or something, you know? Yeah. Dude... The Chinese government is awful. It truly is. They have is. never kept a single you can't promise. Understate that. Not a single promise from the Chinese government no. to international communities has no. ever been kept. No. Think Not carbon it. agreements, nothing. Nothing. They say they're going to land gonna, disputes. Yeah, nope. They say no. they're going to clamp down on intellectual property no. or whatever. Nope. Human trafficking? Oh, well, we'll look after your investments. Nope. Nope. Everything. No. Fentanyl? Nope. nope. Dude, everything. That What's oh, left to break? It's like Hong Kong, we won't touch you for 50 years. Nope. nope. Come on, like every single thing that the Chinese government has yeah. promised, uh, they never stick to. So I don't know why anyone yeah, expects USA them to. Such a bully. Yeah, they keep <laughs> like so dumb, it's so dumb. Anyway, so we yeah. thought we'd just let you all know about that nonsense. Yes, yes. Go Philippines, by the way. Oh, and now we have a little request of. This all is of not you. an ad. Yeah. This is a, an appeal to you that yes. you will in, to watch something that we made that you will love. Yes, yeah, so um, you know our ADV China channel doesn't get a lot of love these days. We um, we don't release all that often, but yeah. we came across one of our old uh, things that we filmed. It's a whole series. 
Yeah, the whole bunch. We um, remastered some some old videos. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, when we were in China, we couldn't really talk about certain things. We couldn't put it out there. And, you know, we'd go out and have a good idea and we'd film a thing. And then afterwards we'd be like, you know, we can't really show this. We can't really talk about this. There's a lot this. of that stuff on the back burner. Yeah. So uh, we did, uh, remember this is, what, 20, 2015 or something? Something like that, Some 2014, yeah. thereabouts. Yeah. We did a whole series about sign Chinese serial killers. I think killers. it was 2016. Was it? I okay. think so, yeah. Anyway, we did this whole thing about Chinese serial killers. It was. Killers. It was in between conquering southern and northern China. Right, right. Yeah. So um, we thought that uh, you guys might like this, and we released one the other day, and I think you may not have seen it because of the algorithm. So we thought we'd give you a little snippet. We're going to stay in here. We're not going to yeah. get out of this. We'll just give you a little snippet. Old school ADV yeah. in China. Yeah, I like this little intro you put together nice. here. We filmed all of this ourselves, yeah. by the way. This is all over. Yeah. That creepy village. Must have been like 40 years old. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like, I know that it is. The bricks. We Man. were like, well, we found an ancient village. And it was like a sign. It was like China's ancient village. It was like 1976. Yeah, there was like, like a plaque. What? It's like, come on, man. Bro, like, it's like 50. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Yeah, the red dress slasher. So, yeah, let's see what happened a little bit here. Hey, Simo, you know, it's kind of a spooky night tonight. Maybe, it is, it is. <laughs> maybe we should talk a little bit about, uh, I don't know, some, some serial killers, some kind of like crime, drama, murder mystery kind of stuff. I don't think anyone should be killing anyone over Lucky Charms. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like seriously, you hear a lot about uh, serial killers in Western media. It's a very yeah. popular thing, right? People yeah. love to talk about, the, I don't know, the Ted Bundys and the Jeffrey Dahmers and stuff, but you never really hear about Chinese serial killers. Yeah, that's actually true. Did you notice, I have a little factoid, by the way. Yeah. Did you notice that... Uh... Yeah, just a so, little snippet. Just a it. snippet. Uh, by the way, I just fondly remember the scooter I was riding there. It was something that we rescued from a scrap pile, remember? Yeah. Uh, it was a 90cc two-stroke Honda Dio. Yes. And got it uh, completely. I refurbished it, even repainted it, made it look real nice. I actually really like that little scooter. That was fun. Very slow. Anyway. Uh, it, it hit 80 kilometers an hour. True. Do you know this mm -hmm. video gets absolutely insane with us riding through traffic? Oh, yeah. If you, want, if you want to away. see... The stupid shit we used to do, the, the stupid danger we would put ourselves in by riding around on uh, the roads in China. This is a good video as an yes. example. Um, anyway, <laughs> it's up now on mm -hmm. ADV China. I want you guys to open it in another tab right now. We would appreciate if you could. Uh, there's a link in the description, right? And, and in, and the, in chat. the comments. Please go give it a like and give it a watch. Yes. We would I think you'll like it. it. If you like true crime, yeah. If it's you like, great. if you want to learn about the red dress slasher, this yeah. dude who killed you know tons of women in China and murdered them. But only if they wore red. Yeah. Uh, very cool story. Very terrible, but cool story. But a well, very I mean, cool it's, video. It's, it's one of those things where you don't hear about these things because China likes to block the bad uh, news yeah. from coming out. But hey, just like everywhere else in the world, serial killers exist in China. And they oh, yeah. exist a lot. Yes. They exist a lot. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Of course, anyway. there's 4444 four, four, four viewers right now, guys, when we're talking about serial killers. Yeah, it's great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's just it's great. Anyway. It's holding there. It's just holding there, guys. It's just holding there. That's freaking life. Look at us all small here next to this this university army parade thing. Anyway. Please open that in the tab. Yeah, please. We implore you to go take a look. Uh, simply because the channel is so inactive that it never really gets new content, and so it doesn't get boosted by YouTube anymore. It's one of those things. Yeah, it's because we don't post very so, often, but you'll like it. I think you'll enjoy it if you're interested in serial killers and crime and stuff like that. And also, uh, go help out the channel. 